Lastly, stereo isomerism 20.3. These are the objective. So here we have isomerism. So the molecule is different because of different arrangements of atoms. Now this could be completely different where you have completely different structural groups. So you might have the oxygen in an OH form or the oxygen uh, in a hydroxyl form, maybe, or maybe the oxygen is in, in a carbonyl form. So that's completely a completely different molecules altogether. Stereoisomerism is really what we're more interested in, and that is just the spatial rearrangement. So we can have uh, configurational isomerism and conformational isomerism. Now, conform conformational isomerism is just the fact that this thing can spin. So if you've got CH3 or Cl here, this bond here can spin around, and so you could have the Cl over here and the CH3 over here. All right, so these ones here are, uh, that's fairly minor in its effects, and this is a completely different compound. What we're really gonna concentrate uh, in this unit are the configurational isomerism, the optical isomerisms and the cis-trans isomers. So these things cannot be changed at all. They're fixed in fixed positions, and they're different, and they can't be just spun around to look the same. So you can see here with cis trans isomers, now we ignore this one here, because actually that's not an isomer. You just flip it. Uh, if you flip this around, it's really the same thing. So when we're looking at cis trans, we're looking at these combinations here. So this is how you actually learn it, to be honest. Uh, if you have this here with an X, and this is an X, and this is a Y, and this is a Y, the same side of the double bond does not mean this. So the same side of the double bond, because these two can be flipped into the same thing. So the same side of the double bond must be regarded as this here. So if you look here, this is the same side. The, the two bonds are on the same side. And in, in here, there are different compounds. Uh, so they've swapped sides. So there's trans there. So knowing why this is not an isomer also helps to explain. Do you, when you say this which side of the double bond do you mean in this symmetry or do you mean in this symmetry here? So here we have a cis and here we have a trans. You can also lock them in place if it's a circular compound. They're on the same side of the double bond and here they've swapped over so we'd call this uh, a trans here. Back to this slide here, we can see the naming. So all we do is we just name the compound as normal, 1,2-dichloroethane and we can see they're on the same side here so we call them cis and these ones the opposite so we call them trans. This is important for the properties of the molecule because this will have a net dipole so this will have more of a dipole moment and you would expect that the melting point boiling point would be higher. Now getting a little bit more complicated what happens if you just don't have two groups and you've got more than two groups here we have four different groups here in this case we call them easy isomers now you might have you might know some German because it's on the opposite and Zuzerman excuse my German is a Z but I think this one's the easier one a Z looks like an S and a mirror, and we're doing isomers, so mirror shapes are quite uh, relevant. And so there's another way to remember it, but whatever suits you, I find this one the best one. A Z is just an S in the mirror, S for same. So think of uh, Z is, is on the same side, and E is opposite. If you look at the rules, we take the atom with the highest atomic number as the, as the, the priority. We, do, we can differentiate those groups here. So it would be, these two would be the ones that we're looking at when we're describing the molecules, either E or Z. If the atom's the same, apply the rule to the next bonded atom in the chain. So here we have an example to the same one. We don't have the same thing here. So we don't have like bromine and then there'd be bromine with one C or with two Cs. Uh, so it's fairly simple on that regard. Uh, we look here, we know it's these two groups, we know they're on the same side, so we call them a Z. And this one here, they're on the opposite nut side now, so then we just put a little E there in brackets. So one bromo, two methyl, but one E, one is a Z and one's an E isomer. Looking at the properties now, I've mentioned already that the polarity will increase here, so that will increase the boiling point. It's also important to mention the types of bonding that will be involved with this. Uh, and so with this one, we would just look at the high, uh, the London dispersion force as well as the polar bond here so we'd have always have London dispersion and we'd also have dipole dipole bonding here again with this particular compound they're all into on this side here as opposed to here this one's particularly interesting because the in this case on the both sides it hydrogen bonds with itself 
which limits the ability of it to interact with other molecules. So if you have them at opposite ends, they are much better to interact with other molecules and therefore increase the boiling point. So be aware of that and make sure you say hydrogen bonding. Don't forget London dispersion in there, although that's not critical. Just remember it because it, it does exist. Lastly, moving on to optical isomers. This is like your left and right hand. You can see that, that they can't, they look the same, but they are actually, cannot be superimposed on each other and so we call them enantiomers. If you have a very large molecule it's possible that you have several of these groups on the molecule and if you've got two or more you call them diastereomers. So they're non-superimposable. They're a chiral carbon, you basically find the carbon and you look and see that the four groups are different and then you know you've got an optical isomer. So the optical isomers bend the, the direction of the polarized light. If you can use a polarimeter to work this out. If it bends it to the left, we call them levorotary. If it bends it to the right, it's positive and dextrorotary. So there are some words to remember. Left is the L, uh, that's how I remember it. Uh, it's negative, positive, well most people write with their right hand. And another key word to remember is in most reactions it's 50-50 because it's just completely random. So that's called a race mate or race mic mixture. Make sure you have learnt all your terminology just like every other unit uh, so you can ex use those terms to explain or understand the question. This is how the polarimeter works. First you need to polarize the light so that you can see that there's a turn. You need to put this through a decent distance so it actually has an effect. I think the polarimeter we have is 10 centimeters and then you'll see it will bend the light so you'll turn this and to see that the greatest effect when the light is blocked and when the light is blocked you can then measure the angle of that and that will tell you how much it's turned because these filters at right angles will cancel each other out and cause the darkness. The relevance of these things. Now interestingly in nature only one of these forms is usually useful and it's actually the L. So the L amino acids that is. All right, amino acids are the most common because the general form of that is a chiral carbon, the carboxylic acid, uh, and that's the general structure of the random group here. Now this is important as it's important for drugs. There's a famous one that's uh, thalidomide and that had an effect that one form was therapeutic and the other one caused birth defects which is a teratogen. So you need to know that word as well. So it's important that these are separated because in circumstances one can be helpful and one can be harmful and it's also expensive to do. Last note is a TOK which I find personally interesting. If there is lots of L's and D's then you would expect that in the formation of proteins why is it that all of the amino acids were L and if we got our proteins why weren't there mixtures of L, D's and in effect would be uh, wouldn't have worked so that's an unusual and interesting question that uh, you might want to discuss.